be questioned before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a responsibility. So he said, the Prophet sallallahu told Abu Dhar, never, never rule over even two persons and do not manage an orphan's property. If you are weak and your nafs will dictate to you to be unjust to the orphan, then don't accept it. Also, signs of riya. How can we know the signs and the indications or indicators that one has riya? Number one, delaying the salah without legal excuse. And this is a sign that you have this uh, science, this type of riya, which is a type of shirk, because you are delaying your salah. And this is actually a sign of nifaq, sign of hypocrisy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَهُونَ Woe to them, those who pray and delay their salah. They don't pray in time. They pray dhuhr almost as a time. Asr almost Maghrib time. Maghrib almost Isha. Isha almost Fajr time. And they go on. And the Fajr, when the sun is above the horizon, when they get up from their sleep, they just pray the Fajr. So this is a sign that you have this disease in your heart. So you delay your Salah without any legal excuse. And the legal excuse, for instance, that you were asleep, for instance. That is also an excuse. You overslept. So when you get up, you pray or you were sick, or you some, for one reason or another, you forgot the salah. So there is an excuse. But to delay the salah without an excuse is a sign of nifaq, is a sign of hypocrisy. So this is an indicator. How can I know that I have the riya in my heart showing off this disease if I delay my salah? Second thing, doing the ibadah with laziness. You come to the masjid dragging your feet, walking weakly, walking slowly, no energy. You are not energetic. So this is also another sign. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And seeks Allah's help with patience and perseverance and prayer. It is indeed hard, the salah. It is indeed hard, except to those who bring lowly spirit. Those who are humble, those who have khushu'a, those who are down to earth for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So doing the ibadah with laziness is also a sign of hypocrisy and a sign of having riya wal iyadu billah. Also, the dreadful, they are the horrible consequences of riya. Horrible consequences of Riyah. The Prophet Sallallahu he warned the Muslim against the Riyah. He says in one of his hadith that Riyah is more dangerous than the Dajjal. Than the Dajjal. Every Muslim knows who's the Dajjal, the Antichrist. The Antichrist is the Dajjal who misleads the people, who takes them away, who claims that he is God himself. And Jesus Christ is the one who's going to kill the Dajjal, as we know. So here, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, Shall I inform you of what is more dangerous to you than the Dajjal? More dangerous than the Dajjal? All the prophets, all the prophets and messengers who preceded Muhammad Sallallahu they warned the people against the Dajjal. They warned the people against the Antichrist. And yet, see what the Prophet Sallallahu said. Shall I inform you of what is more dangerous to you than the Dajjal? The inconspicuous shirk, which is the riya, the hidden shirk, the subtle shirk in your heart. One stands to pray and tries to perfect his salah because he feels someone is watching him. Subhanallah. This is in Sunan Ibn Majah. So you stand to pray and you try to perfect your salah, not for the sake of Allah, but because someone is watching you. This is more dangerous than the Dajjal himself. This is more dangerous than the Dajjal himself, according to the saying of the Prophet Also, Riya harms one's deen. It harms your deen. It affects your deen. Then, subhanAllah, then the 
effect or the damage that might be caused by two hungry wolves. There is a hadith which is in Tirmidhi and Musnad Ahmad. The Prophet said, two hungry wolves let loose in a flock of sheep cannot cause as much as the harm that one's covetousness for the wealth and prestige caused to the deen. Just reflect on this deen hadith, my dear brothers and sisters. If we lose, set free two hungry wolves in the midst of a flock of sheep, what the, flock, the wolves will do? They will eat one sheep, two sheep, three sheep, four sheep, then they will leave. They cannot eat the whole flock. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying, the damage that the showing of does to your iman is more than the damage that two hungry wolves might do to the flock of sheep. So we need to work hard in purifying our souls, purifying our intentions, singling out our deeds for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, seek Him by that, His pleasure. May Allah grant all of us the ikhlas. Amen. Also, my dear brothers and sisters, the riya or showing off nullifies the righteous deeds. It nullifies it. It spoils it. It will be rejected. Allah will not accept it. Because it is a form of shirk. The riya deprives one of receiving the reward. Deprives one from receiving the reward. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reward you. Naturally, Allah will not reward you because you are not doing it for his sake and only his sake. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us ikhlas in this world and in the second, inshallah. And inshallah, we'll continue in the coming episode. Inshallah, be with us, inshallah. May Allah protect you, preserve you. And may Allah purify our souls and your souls. I mean, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.